Hey there, greetings, my friends. Happy Wednesday. Um, thanks so much for joining in on the conversation today. We're back. We were here yesterday um, with a surprise video, kind of talking about an experience that I had back in 2017 and how it led to um, where I am today in my uh, health content marketing journey. But today, we're having less of a story time and more of a tough love conversation. So I'm excited to dive into it. I'll be honest, it has been interesting to look at um, to look at kind of the metrics for this video. So usually I have a couple people who are signed up to attend and I anticipated when I shared the topic of this video that there were going to be fewer people publicly um, marking that they were going to attend this particular conversation because of the nature of the title and the topic. And, you know, with LinkedIn being a professional networking platform, um, I figured that this was kind of one of those more controversial subjects that folks might not necessarily want people to know that they were um, attending. So I'm going to say up front that um, if this video, if you're watching this video privately and kind of not making yourself known, which is totally fine, I want to encourage you to share this video privately via messages if you if you feel compelled. Share this video with a friend or colleague who you feel like needs to hear this conversation. Um, because I know that I know that it can be tough to have these conversations and to draw attention to the fact that right you might not be completely settled or fulfilled in what is essentially your job or your career, but it is still important for us to, to talk about these things so that we can act on them and so that we can change things, not just for people in the future, but for ourselves right now as well. So I just wanted to lead with that because I already know, I already know what's going on here right now. Um, for those who I haven't met before, my name is Megan Freeland. I'm a public health pharmacist turned health content strategist. Um, I'm the founder of Stock Rose Creative, which is a health content marketing um, company. And I also created the Health Professionals to Health Writers Program, which helps pharmacists learn how to replace a portion of their pharmacist income through freelance health content writing. So it's really great to meet you if I haven't met you before. These videos are really informal, so you can always feel free to leave a comment, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching on the replay. Hey to whoever's watching right now. Um, and you can always private message me as well if you rather have a, a direct message conversation. So don't need that alarm right now. Um, so I know that these are conversations that I have with um, colleagues in my network as well. Even though I am not a traditionally practicing pharmacist, uh, most of my pharmacy friends are. Um, and so we have these conversations a lot. And I'm sure that you've had some of these conversations amongst your own circles and amongst your own networks as well, uh, spaces that you consider to be safe, where you're able to kind of express feelings that you have about your work environment or your responsibilities or anything kind of related to the trajectory that your career is taking right now. Uh, sometimes when when I'm talking to folks who are interested in my coaching program, they're kind of like, when did you graduate? Um, because they can tell I'm not, you know, I'm not very old. Um, and I'm not. I'm in my early 30s. Um, and I graduated in from pharmacy school in 2015, which was just, what, six years ago? And that's kind of wild to think about. Um, but over the course of these past six years, it's been really interesting to kind of settle into adulthood and um, and the workforce and really seeing up close and personal what work life and professional life are really like, not just for myself and my own experiences, but also seeing that through the lenses of my friends, my peers, my colleagues, other people that I might work with and the experiences that they've had, especially if they've been in the profession much longer than me. Um, and so because of that, obviously, like you, I also have a lot of conversations with my colleagues who are in healthcare. So not even just pharmacists, right? But in a lot of cases, these might be nurses, they might be physicians, physician assistants, physical therapists, but they're expressing, they're expressing common, um, common things. Like there are, there are common threads that I hear in the conversations that we have. There are oftentimes expressing a, a true love 
for the science, for educating patients about whatever their particular specialty area is. Um, a lot of times they really love the, the essence of what they do, like the, the, the education portion of what it is that they do. But then that point is often countered with a an experience of like having a lack of meaning and a lack of purpose in the way that they are actually able to implement their work and execute the duties of their job. Um, so in some cases, maybe it's like overhead or maybe it's like red tape that prevents that prevents you from really being able to do what it is that you're trained to do as a pharmacist, as a healthcare provider. And that kind of tension between those two things of really loving the space that you're in and what you are trained to do, but not being able to do the things that you're trained to do or not being able to do those things efficiently or in a way that efficiently and effectively impacts patients on the other side, that tension is where is where things start getting um, uncomfortable, and in a lot of cases, as you know, that leads to uh, unhappiness at work. That leads to a feeling of feeling unfulfilled at work. It can lead to burnout because you're working, 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 and you're not feeling or noticing or experiencing the reward on the other side, and it's really discouraging to hear these things because when 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 you ask, you know. Why are you feeling this way? Why are you having this experience in your work? A lot of times the, the work is not to blame. It's the environment around the work that is to blame. The environment in a lot of cases is impacting your ability to do your job at all or to do your job well or to do your job efficiently or to do your job in a way that's actually positively impacting patients or to do your job in a way that is not negatively impacting you. And so there, there's this kind of dissonance in the, in the loving of the work and the essence of what it is that you're trained to do and why you got into this space. But the just the hard outer shell of the atmosphere and the environment that's created around that work. As you all know, the settings that many pharmacists and healthcare providers are working in is, is ironically unhealthy. Like for us to be people who are supposed to be delivering health care, health services to others, to the public, we are oftentimes working in environments that are doing the opposite to us. They're making us less healthy than we should be. And then we want our patients to be because of that environment, right? Some environments are toxic. Some environments are dangerous, not only to ourselves, but to our patients. Some environments are demoralizing or in some way they're damaging to our physical health or our, our mental health, our emotional health. Um, and it's it's tragic because, I mean, I don't know any I don't know any pharmacist in my personal circle who who got into the profession and didn't want to actually help people to help people become more healthy. And so for you to be stuck in a position like that or in a trajectory, a path like that or in an environment like that, where you start to wonder, is it worth being in this space? Is the harm that is being done to me in this space worth me staying in this environment in order to help other people like you know, we're trained to weigh the risks and benefits. Is the risk of me staying in this space worth, you know, the benefit of helping somebody else while I'm in this space? Um, and, and that's frustrating to have to kind of look at it that way. And especially when you came into this profession to do purposeful work, that's going to be positively impacting patients' lives. And you're doing that or you're trying to do that, but at what cost, at what expense? Um, so the, the truth is that many of you are
Okay, um, we're back. Sorry about that. So the truth is, many many people are um, are not doing work that they consider purposeful or meaningful, or maybe the work that you're doing does bring you some meaning or some sense of fulfillment or kind of walking in a specific purpose, but perhaps the impact of that work is not as broad or as far reaching as you would like it to be ideally. Um, another point is like maybe you are using your pharmacy degree or your license in a very practical sense, like as a tool, as a requirement, right? Because you have to be, you have to have certain qualifications to do the job that you are doing right now. But maybe you are not feeling as though you're using that degree or that license to actively be educating or informing or improving the general public's health. So it's almost like the degree and the license is kind of a technicality. Like, yes, I have these things because I have to have them in order to be practicing where I am right now, but I'm not using them in a clinical sense or in an education-based based sense to be actually like impacting patients' lives. So that's another common complaint uh, or or just comment, like type of commentary that I hear from folks who aren't quite satisfied in their current roles. And then there are also people, of course, who like actually love their jobs. Um, but in that love for those jobs, the job takes so much away from them, so much mental energy. Um, and because of that, they don't have the amount of time or energy that they would want to spend with their families or, you know, traveling, like having that time and location independence because that job requires them to be in a certain place at a certain time and maybe for a long time. And so even though that is a space where that person might be feeling fulfilled or finding meaning in their work, at some point, they might also be looking for some balance, right? So that they're also able to enjoy the their, their other meaningful parts of their lives, whether that's like family or just activities and hobbies that you really love. So there are all kinds of reasons why within the confines of your job, of your workspace, you might not be feeling... Um, you not, might not be feeling completely aligned with where you are. Sometimes because um, sometimes because it's just a bad environment, and sometimes because maybe the environment itself is okay, but the time that it takes away from the rest of your life um, is causing some dissonance there. Uh, so there are <laughs> there are all kinds of reasons. I mean, I so I, I also want to share that. Personally, um, I've always been on a on a non-traditional path. So I always say this, when I came into pharmacy, my goal was to become a public health pharmacist. I wanted to work for the CDC. That was my dream. Um, I, I, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina originally, which is about three hours away from Atlanta. And in high school, in the ninth grade, I remember we took a field trip to Atlanta where we toured Emory University and we toured the CDC. They're right next to each other, like right down the street. And I decided right then and there that I was going to go to Emory for college and I was going to work at the CDC. So those are all always my two goals. Um, and so because of that, I've never worked in a traditional pharmacy space as a pharmacist. I did work in a hospital for four years during pharmacy school, just as a pharmacy intern. Um, but as a pharmacist, my, my career settings have always been non-traditional. However, that doesn't mean that I haven't found myself in situations that I would consider um, unhealthy in, in work environments that I would consider unhealthy and where I could um, see, I could actually see how being in that position was affecting me, not just at work and the output that I was able to give, but that was also affecting me at home as a wife and as a mother um, to, a, to a small child at that time. And it, that's very real. Like when you're in a place 40 plus hours a week where you are struggling mentally to overcome so many challenges consistently, 
um, that is that's that is not healthy. And I have been in that place where I've had to make really tough decisions. Honestly, the um, and I don't I don't even share this job on resumes because I was there for such a short period of time. But it was the closest job to a traditional pharmacy job that I've ever had. It wasn't community or hospital but it was close to a semi-traditional pharmacy job. And it was the highest paying full-time job I've ever had because of that. Um, and so the money was great. The environment was not. And I remember going to my supervisor in tears, like um, probably three to four weeks after I started that position. And I explained the issues that I was having um, in that position. And um, at that time, I had just come off of maternity leave. My, my son was maybe seven weeks old when I started that job. Um, that was the latest they would let me start was when he was seven weeks. And um, so at this point, in, when I was having this conversation with her, he was probably 10 weeks old, 10 or 11 weeks old. And the issue was I wasn't seeing him because the schedule that um, that was created for this particular role was unclear when I uh, decided to take it. And it was a bad schedule. And so I was I went from seeing my son like 24 seven right on on maternity leave, which wasn't real maternity leave. I paid for that myself. Um, I went from seeing him 24 seven to literally seeing him for maybe 15 to 20 minutes a day. And that was during the time when I was nursing before I went to work. And I explained to her the issue, um, which that was the main part of it, but there were other things as well. I, I came to her, you know, I was in tears. I was just really upset by how things had played out and that lack of transparency up front. Um, and there was no there was no real response or or attempt to rectify that situation or see what could be worked out or anything. So three months later, I was gone. And it was a full circle moment um, because when I when I told her, like, I'm leaving, I told her in that first conversation, I said, this is not sustainable. Just FYI, like this, this is not sustainable. And when I went to her three months later and said, you know, I've accepted another opportunity. She was the one in tears. And I I mean, I, I just that that is a very specific example that um, that has happened in my past. And I know that for those of you listening who are pharmacists, that you've probably had a lot of those um, situations as well, where just you're you're in an environment that is not conducive to your own health, to your to your own mental or physical health and wellness. Um, so, of course, there are plenty of things that need to be done at the leadership level, at the institutional level in order to work on these things. But in the meantime, I think it's also important to think about what can you be doing on an individual level to at least make your situation a little bit better. And honestly, like depending on what your specific situation is, there might not be a whole lot of options, but I think it's definitely worth sitting down and diving into and thinking about. So like, what do potential solutions look like? Um, so self-care is obviously a thing that people like to talk about a lot, but when you're thinking about self-care when in the context of like a job that is unhealthy to you, um, in terms of your mental or physical health and wellness, the self-care can't be the superficial self-care like going to get your nails done. Um, this is this is like thinking about taking care of your body, but also thinking about how you can proactively um, take care of your mind and your spirit, even if you're going to be stuck in that situation for a little bit longer. So that might involve taking a closer look at your income, your lifestyle, your expenses, finding out how you can become less dependent on a on any particular job. But that particular job that is causing you so much distress, especially if it is actively harming you in some way, um, that is the type of self-care I'm talking about. Like it, and that self-care is not always comfortable. That self-care is not always glitter and rainbows and massages and, you know, nail polish. That's like the real self-care of sitting down and having these like tough conversations with yourself. So ask yourself questions like, what are new skills that you can learn? 
right? Or what are what are skills that you already have, but you haven't like really, you know, done anything with them maybe since college or since high school or since, I, I don't know, elementary school or something. What are skills that you can work on um, that can in some way help you either have a creative outlet, just like something to take your mind off of the situation that you're in, or that can possibly serve as an income source for you in the future. Secondly, again, along with creative outlets, what are creative outlets that you can explore? When I found myself in another position where I was really unhappy and doing work that was not giving what needed to be given, I chose to explore a creative outlet of um, starting a blog, which ultimately led into my freelance writing career. So think about creative outlets that you can explore. And then third, are there volunteer opportunities that you can be a part of? So sometimes I find that when we're trying to figure out like what's next from a professional perspective, sometimes we can feel stuck because we feel like we don't know how to do anything else or nobody will take a chance on us to do anything else. Volunteer opportunities are a nice way to build a skill set in something that you don't necessarily have a skill set in yet yet when the stakes are really low because you're a volunteer and nobody's having to pay you to do this and people are often in dire need of volunteers. So thinking about what volunteer opportunities can you be a part of and just continuing to ask yourself questions like that, that can help you really start to develop a plan to get out of where you are. Because I, I find that, um, at least for me, and I know for a lot of other pharmacists, because we're very type A, we plan stuff out, like things are things are laid out, think about your own plan. Because as the title of this said, you're, that whatever money you're bringing in as a pharmacist, if you are in a job that is actively harming you, actively taking away from your physical or mental health and wellness, it ain't worth it. It's truly not. It's truly not. Um, sometimes for a season, we have to be in a place, right? That job that I mentioned before that I was only at for three or four months, when I think back on it, I almost like want to throw up. The only silver lining is that I used a lot of the extra money because, again, that was the highest paying job I'd ever had. I saved so much money and I used all that money to pay for our wedding <laughs> so that we didn't have to go into debt for our wedding. So when I think back on it, that's like the one saving grace. And I'm so I'm grateful for that experience because at least we were able to easily save money that we wanted to use for our wedding. So for a season, okay, I felt like God put me there for a season. I dealt with it for the season. I got what I needed to get out of it and I moved on. So understand that sometimes, yeah, you, you're going to be where you are for a season, but also be thinking about a plan for how to protect yourself during that season and how to make a path out of that situation when that season has ended. So answers are going to be different for everyone. They're going to be different for you. Um, for me, that this is how I started um, going down the path of blogging and writing and getting into freelance writing. Again, I started a blog as a creative outlet and I kind of ended up on this path. Had I known at the time that freelancing was a thing, I would have jumped more intentionally into that, but I didn't. <laughs> so it was an accident. Um, but it worked out nonetheless. Um, so again, your answer might be different from mine. It might be similar to mine. I don't know. But I think this would be a great uh, journaling. If you're into journaling, I think this will be a great journaling exercise for you tonight or over the next few days to kind of ask yourself these questions about what are new skills that you can learn? What are creative outlets that you can explore? And what are volunteer opportunities that you can be a part of? to kind of help um, help you start thinking about how you can take better care of yourself in this particular season and also help you start to draw a path out of this particular space uh, when this season, when it's time for it to wrap. So I know that was a lot. Um, remember to share this video with a friend. You can share it privately via like a, a direct message, but share this with a friend who needs to hear it because it's a conversation that I know um, 
is not the most palatable in all spaces, but I think it's really important for us to continue having in spaces like this because we are we are each other's support, right? So thank you for tuning in. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with another with another video. So I'll be seeing you then.